What's happening, everybody? So today we're going to be going through some of the drums on a new remix I'm working on. And basically what I'm going to do is show you how to get your drums sounding from this. To this. Okay guys, so let's let's jump straight into it and let me show you the process and uh, techniques, everything like that. So the first thing I did was just small EQ on some samples that um, that I thought needed stuff like shakers, hats, took a lot of low end out, clapped, just shaped it a little bit more. And then I also did my pan and left or right. Um, so as you can see here, my clap is at uh, two o'clock. Um, so plus 31 Um, my hats are uh, just spaced out from center so this is plus 5 and then you'll see my shakers is minus 10 just over the left a wee bit so that's the first thing I always do and then the next thing is I route all my samples to a bus so for example um, on Logic on any uh, any track here individually you can click here usually it's set at stereo output by default but i send everything to a bus so for me bus 8 i have it named as drum glue so after that the first thing i always do is use a transient shaper and for the transient shaper i use is called smack attack it's by waves and basically what this is, is it shapes the transient of each sample. So, for example, if you download something off the internet, something like um, a clap on Splice, sometimes it can already be heavily processed and it can have reverb on it, reverb on it delay on it, for example. And what I want to do with the transient shaper is just remove any excess space that's already on the sample. So I have a preset here called Room Remover. And basically what that does is just shorten the transient and I'll give you an example of that. So this is all the drums together with my uh, smack attack. So that's with smack attack on as you can see um i have the attack set quite high uh duration halfway the duration of the attack is quite sharp in the beginning and then rolls off and then just five percent sustain so this without smack attack So as you can hear, everything's quite loose in the mix. There's an awful lot of room. Things are a little bit washy, as I like to say. And, and basically, Smack Attack just removes that then altogether. So nice and short, drums nice and clear, a little bit more punch, a little bit crispier. Uh, the next thing then on my chain will be a glue compressor. Um, so, for example, if you're using Ableton, Ableton has uh, glue compressors. The one I like to use is a uh, Cytomic uh, glue compressor. Um, it, it's just uh, the sound out of it gives it a little bit of warmth. Yeah, it's, it's really, really good. I have it set on a ratio of 4 to 1, attack 3, auto release, and then an 85% dry to wet mix. So I still want a little bit of that wet signal coming through, and then um, it should... Um, I have my compression set at about about minus four dB reduction, and same with my makeup is uh, plus plus four. So this without it. Yeah, so I, what I'm doing there is just tightening everything together just a little bit more and gluing all the samples together. The next thing I always do is a little bit of saturation. Um, this is a trick I learned from Disclosure, actually. And um, it's basically just a preset on FabFilter Saturn 2, subtle tape, don't touch anything at all, and it just adds a nice bit of warmth to the top end. And that's the next thing on my bus. So the next thing I always add then is the J37 and it's just run the true tape. And it's I have it set at um, 815, speed is 15 IPS. So 
depending on what speed you go for with this plugin, sometimes it can take away a little bit of the top end, um, a normal bias. And then I have on the way in minus eight dB on the way out, uh, plus eight, I have them linked. And basically this is just giving warmth to the top end again. It's very subtle, but As you can see, or uh, as you can hear, just the hats are a little bit more crispier and yeah, and it just, it helps everything stand out that little bit. So that will be all I'll do for my bus. Um, then the next thing I would do is sends. So on my actual bus on Logic, I will set up three more buses and I will send 100% of the signal to them three buses. So what I have set up is I have parallel compression. I have a room with re reverb on it, so a drum room, for example. And I also have another smack attack where I have everything crushed uh, just that little bit more. So, for example, I'll just show you my buses. So bus 9 which be my uh, this is my parallel compression. I have the low end taken out up to 500 hertz. I have an analog compressor and I have everything crushed that it's distorting, not too much, just to a certain extent. And I use an analog compressor because analog compressor shape distortion. So what I mean by that is when you clip it and run it through, it'll actually shape the distortion that it's not uh, really, really harsh and can actually be mixed in with the mix. It's um, it's a trick used in other genres. Um, but make sure if you're doing parallel compression, especially for this technique, try and use an analog um, compressor or something that can crush it and shape the distortion then I have a gate then just to not not allow any um, unwanted um, frequencies through or harshness or anything like that for my next bus then on my room bus I don't know why that's there um, I just have a simple EQ again just taking out the low end up um, up to about three, four hundred, anywhere up to one K should be okay for this. Uh, then I have a Valhalla vintage verb and I preset I use as a large wood room and then I um, I adjust uh, mix and decay to taste. And uh, the wood room is, is really nice. Now you can experiment in different ways in this, but a uh, wood room for me is really, really nice. Um, and then my third and final bus, which is bus 12, which is another smack attack. And this is life is short for drums. So I'm completely crushing the transients on each drum and then adding them back into the mix just short. And it just gives it a little bit um, more crisp at the end. So I'll go through um, before and after on each one of these buses. So this is uh, before bus 9. This is before the parallel compression. Then this is with it. So I already have these mixed volume wise, but what I like to do is uh, bring this right down to zero and then mix it in to taste. And um, as you can hear, that just adds um, a nice crispiness to the top end of the drums. Um, then we have our bus 10, which is our room. Yeah, so it's what I'm doing is because I'm using um smack attack and taking away um all the space in the drums, I want to add my own space back into it. Um my own room. You can use uh, different reverbs experiment with this, but the one I like is Valhalla um large wood room and then mix the uh, mix the mix on Valhalla's uh, vintage verb and the decay on it then to taste as well. You want something not not a big space, a nice short space, something um something just just to add a little bit of space to each drum and then for my last one then um i already have this and uh mixed in this is my life is short on smack attack um and this is basically just crushing the transients again and then mixing them back in So then that just helps everything stand out that little bit extra.
and then I'll play everything with the kick then just so that you get an example of what, it, what it's like in a mix and the bass where is my bass my bass here Yeah, so th that's um, how I process my drums. Um, so your four main things is um, set a bus up with uh, that you, you route all your individual samples to. Use a transient shaper to um, shape the transients and basically make them nice and short. Um, remove any excess um atmosphere or xx noise in a sample glue everything together a little bit of saturation and then root your buses then and then um your parallel uh, parallel compression anything like that is everything is a little bit to taste as well and um, this is the way i like to do it there is other techniques other compressors that you can use but um this is the way i do it and yeah that's everything so i hope you guys enjoy don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and uh, yeah we'll see you next time Thank you.